Hello, I'm Chris, and I'm here today with my friend James. Uh, James is very into C, and he also worked for a web design company for a while. And um, today I'd just like to ask you a little bit about when you're working for that company over the last couple of years, uh, what did you guys do for commits as far as large group of people working on one project? And also, what did you guys do for backups? How often did you back up? Every time you committed, did you back something up somewhere? It was like a daily thing. So just a little bit of detail on that. And um, as we were talking before we started this interview, he's going to touch on this lightly in this interview, but in the future he's probably going to go into more detail uh, and more technical aspect of it in future talks. Sure. So, um, you know, what we did at this company is we used a versioning software called Subversion. Uh, it's a very popular software. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, it is free, free to use. I, I believe it's open source, but actually I, I, you probably should check that and maybe put right. it somewhere. Now, Subversion, uh, I think I heard you mention uh, uh, CVN. Is that the same thing or is that S something? SVN. SVN, that's, SVN, what, I, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. SVN, Subversion. Subversion, I think, is a technical name. SVN is just like the command and I think uh, people like the shorthand for it. Okay. Uh, so, so SVN is very similar to Git. Um, there are some differences. SVN is before Git. The, the, I, I believe in the history, if I understand correct, you know there were versioning softwares, but uh, Torvo Tor, uh, Linus, Linus uh, was say. was looking for a, uh, a versioning software that was more democratic mm -hmm. and, and didn't really focus on a single authoritative source, and so that's when they came up with Git. But uh, it's it's still very similar. Uh, with Subversion, you're able to collaboratively work with, with multiple people, uh, just like in Git. And uh, essentially what you're doing is, uh, you're, you're in, in SVN at least, you're, you're downloading the project to your computer, and there are files that store the state of, of, of the project you downloaded. And as you edit the file, it, it knows, because it can basically diff and, and find the differences, and see what updates you've made to those those files, and um, once you've edited those files, you can then recommit them back to the project you're working on. Um, so now, when you make yeah. a commitment, uh, I'm assuming you guys are running your own personal servers because um, it was a private project. Yes. Um, when you guys committed something, did it automatically back up the last changes somewhere, or did once you commit something, it overwrote the last thing, and you guys periodically did back up. Yeah, it's it's really neat how Subversion works, and and the more you use it, I think the more you kind of understand uh, how the background of, of Subversion works, uh, because you know essentially it's it's easier to think about instead of thinking about every time you commit something that it stores what you what what you have your final product. A better way to think about it is is what it really does is it is it stores the differences between the last time it was committed to what you're committed. Mm -hmm. So, um, what 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 that means is when you're <laughs> when you're um, when you're committing something, you, it gets a, a version number, mm -hmm. and you can always roll back actually to to any of those version numbers. And as a matter of fact, there's special types of merges you can do where you can say, "Well, take all the changes I made from commit number 20 to commit number 30 and reapply them." to this file, or take all the commits I've done on this section of files and then apply those changes to this section of files. Okay, so now you've worked with that for a couple of years with the company you're working for. Have you worked at all with Git? Like, are you familiar? I know obviously you're probably more familiar uh, with Subversion, but have you worked yeah. with Git? Yes, I work with Git quite a bit. And, and again, it's very similar, but I think Git is more the mindset. And, and that's an interesting thing in programming is it's it's not just about the technical details. What's even more important is the concepts, the way to think about something. And mm -hmm. so Git is, is a little more democratic and when you're using Git, the better way to think about it is uh, there is no source. Uh, you become uh, a source and, and, and you can merge throughout the different sources. Okay. Uh, you know, so that's the main difference. Okay. Yeah, because I just recently, with the projects I've been currently working on, uh, just really started using GitHub and the git command, and I know the basics, and so far my projects I have worked on with myself. Right. I haven't really had other people help me yet, because they're just kind of starting out, right. before I go out and ask for help, I want to have something complete, so I don't look yeah. just like someone begging for help. Um, so I'm still very curious about how it all works, and I'm learning as I go along. Yeah, so for, like if I'm going to set up a uh, subversion, what I'm going to do, if, if we're working on a project together, it's probably going to be on a server that 
that um, I'm going to set up access to and, and you and yourself and myself we're going to have a username and a password and I'm going to give you permissions to work on that project and I might even say well Chris Chris can only edit uh, the, the the trunk he can't edit a brand or maybe I can say Chris can only edit his own special branch and then I can see what you're doing on the branch and I can I can merge your changes in yeah, that's the sort of thing right. I need to learn with github right. as I start getting help from, hopefully getting help right. from other people I was like do I get to say approval to this person or do they have to work on the project completely separate and then I add in the codes I assumed it wasn't that but I, I it's something I need to learn and we'll probably get on more into sure. in a future sure. trail sure. with subversion um, yeah, and then the other thing is with, with uh, when you're developing a project with versioning software, what you tend to do is you come up with, with versions. You know, you have numbered versions and you try to think about major revisions, minor revisions, tags and branches. And so, you know, uh, typically you're, you're going to work with a trunk, which is your main source. Uh, your, 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 I mean, it's the trunk of your tree. Mm -hmm. And then you have branches. The branches are sort of derivative works okay points and times that break off that you might want to re-merge back in okay so they kind of become separate projects that later on yeah. could be they're like a clone of the project at one point in time that you can edit and, and commit to separately with a separate timeline that you can then decide to merge back in or maybe it doesn't or maybe it merges back from the the trunk and, and we can get in more detail about that later sure. it's kind of like uh, uh, along the lines of when people complain about certain open source projects that don't commit things back upstream. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like that sort of thing. They have their own thing going on, but they don't right. actually give back. Yeah. It's along those lines. And then in a in a in a subversion project, you you typically have a, 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 a tagging mechanism, which is just sort of like freezing it. So the branch is something you can you can kind of go off of the trunk. You can decide to merge. You can make changes on it independently. You can decide to merge back. A tag is supposed to be like this is locked. No one's going to make any changes to this tag. If there's a bug in this tag we're going to make a new tag. Okay. We're, we're not going to edit this tag. Now, you know, it does not everybody works that way mm -hmm. and, and, and there's different philosophies, but that's typically what you mean by a tag. When you tag, uh, you're going to freeze it. And the way a, a, a subversion works actually is uh, there really isn't any such thing as a, as a branch or a tag inherent into, in the software. But the way you set up a project is you basically set the permissions up that no one can write to a tag. Mm -hmm. And you basically, you know how I said, you can you can copy a set of changes from one directory to another. Well, all a branch is is just another directory where you've copied all the changes from your trunk to another directory. So basically, the, the, the tools of SVN have allowed you to create this idea of branching and tagging uh, that you can use for this philosophy. But since they're just tools, you can have any philosophy you want. Sure. And like you said, people have different ways of doing different things. And, and you briefly mentioned like version numbers. There's no standard on how people do version numbers on software. It's kind of like each yeah. person has their own way of. So the best numbering. way I've heard, though, and 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 I think this is a good philosophy. Uh, uh, this is what we try to adopt: is the first number uh, is the version, and you only change that number if you rewrite the software from scratch. Okay. Okay. The second number is major revisions. When you say the first number, you yeah. mean like so you got two. one dot something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the one, one means that. Maybe there was a zero and they rewrote that. That was the prototype and they rewrote the code. Okay. So now it's a one. See, I always thought in my head, yeah. like, like once you get to a whole number, and this is my, my way yeah, of thinking, yeah. my small little projects working on my own, is um, it's like one, okay, I just hit a stable point. Yeah. And then, like, now I start making big changes. And once those yeah. big changes are stable, now I'm at two. Yeah. And that's kind yeah. of how I think of it. Well, that's the, and then typically the second number is, I would say, is more for that. So that's called mm -hmm. the major. Uh, major revisions mm -hmm. that that number typically again this is all just you know, different people do it different ways right but the second number is major revisions so you probably should roll out um, maybe new uh, maybe new features in that number or maybe even um, if you have a major change in an interface you should definitely keep them for those mm -hmm. you know if the function is no longer valid for you to use if you know you probably have already announced it's deprecated and you've said hey there's a major revision coming up where that's going to be un unusable anymore and then finally the third number and some people have been go to fourth or even farther but the third number is the minor revisions and those are the bug fixes mm -hmm. okay so when you hear 8.2.0 comes out and then it's 8.2 you, you keep downloading updates to get 8.2.1, 8.2.2, 8.2. Those are like little revisions that, that, or little bug fixes usually, 
that, that the developers have made new tags that, that have just fixed those bugs. But when somebody's working on new functionality, they've kept that separate from that project in a way so that they don't have to roll out, accidentally roll out those functions during the next tag. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can develop on a separate little branch until they're done, merge it in, and wait till the next major revision to come out. So that's, right. that's the major point of subversion. Great. Well, James, I thank you for joining me today. And I'll definitely have you on many times in the future because you're very knowledgeable on aspects that I am not knowledgeable on. Um, I think we complement each other very yes. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you again, and I thank you all for watching, and I hope you join me again in the uh, next talk, uh, which will probably be with James as well. Have a great day. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.